Well, we seem to have people flying around these days. I don't know. Don Simmons was in Ottawa yesterday. Don, our CEO, I think you're calling from Los Angeles? Yes, I am, Moira. Thank you very much. I, I traveled the overnight to be here uh, for some exciting business purposes. But boy, what a day in Ottawa yesterday. Uh, as you know, from uh, the start of the program Monday, we had our own interns there. I'm very proud of the work they did there and their representation. And um, I don't know if you realize, but I also took some of our uh, hockey team players and some people from Uxbridge who are in a leadership course that I lead. And uh, one of the things we're doing is exposing them to different types of leaders, along with teaching them the uh, six greatest lessons every young person needs to know. I think that was uh, Senator Don Meredith there with you, Don, in the last picture. Right. So lessons like thinking strategically, taking courageous leadership for the guys, how to treat a woman. And uh, so we actually were hosted by our own MP uh, from the Durham region, Honorable Aaron O'Toole, who's a new MP. He actually uh, facilitated our meetings with uh, Minister Jason Kenney, the Minister of Citizenship, um, a new member, Honorable Joan Crockett from the Calgary Centre, and of course, a Senator Don Meredith, who's always an inspiration uh, when when you come across his path. But uh, one of the very special things that occurred was actually uh, the ability to meet the Prime Minister for a moment, and uh, you perhaps can see the photograph of uh, our Oxbridge uh, gang there with, with him on the stairs in the Prime Minister's uh, offices. Uh, and also, I was able to uh, put directly into his hands, uh, pleased to say, the the new set of uh, eight documentaries on Canada and courageous leaders of Canada, uh, right, right, uh, the Canada heart and soul. So you may see a photograph of that, and uh, he was so tickled to know that uh, there was a documentary there on Paul Henderson. Of course, he's a great hockey buff. And, um, well, and Chris Hadfield and, and uh, some of the great Canadian women and, and so many others. And uh, so that was a real a, a treat. Coming to the prayer breakfast, though, um, it was it was really a moving time, Moira, uh, for anyone in attendance. Uh, ben Hepner was the, uh, the, so the singer or the soloist, which is very moving, of course. It was interesting because members of each of the parties read scripture, and it was fascinating to watch Justin Trudeau lead uh, in a reading of, uh, of scripture there as well. And, and of course, uh, Eric Metaxas, who, who basically, uh, I think, had delivered a perhaps a historic, profound, sort of milestone defining moment message. And I'm so glad, Eric, that you're able to be with us there. Uh, perhaps, perhaps you spoke into the Canadian. Uh, leadership, uh, political landscape here, like like someone from Canada can't even do. And uh, and uh, Moira, what what Eric really said was, uh, along with the mutual respect that we must give differences of opinion, which as Canadians we we've typically tried to agree to. He also said historically, people of faith who have not been ashamed of the values that come with that faith have have actually made incredible positive changes in nations and in the world. Uh, so when uh, he had a historical account, someone like Wilberforce or on Bonhoeffer, or in his new book, as we'll see, he basically illuminates that history proves that people of faith that are willing to endure the cost of that faith make tremendous change for people of the world. And I appreciate, Eric, your uh, your clear clarion call to us as leaders to not put that down, not uh, not try and uh, orphan or isolate people of faith, but in fact encourage people of faith to stand strong and make the changes that God would want us to have in our nation. Well, Eric is listening to those reflections, Don, and I'm going to let him respond. Welcome, Eric. Well, thanks for having me. I, I wish that they would post a, a video of my comments at the prayer breakfast because it was so early, I have no idea what I said. You don't remember. I don't remember said. anything. <laughs> oh, come on. No, it was, listen, it was such an honor for me. I mean, I spoke at the American prayer breakfast with uh, President Obama and, and everything, and that was unbelievable. You got 3,500 people to sing Amazing Grace. Yes, I did. And That's you sang correct. so beautifully. Well, thank you very much. I was just borrowing that voice, but uh, it's, it was an amazing experience. But let me say this, as amazing as that was, and you know, you can watch that on my website, but 
getting invited to speak in a foreign country, being invited to come to Ottawa to speak uh, to Canadian leaders, I have to tell you, that is profoundly humbling. I mean, it really is a true honor on a level, it's very difficult for me to communicate, but to really, to come to your country uh, and to talk, uh, I mean, I really prayed that the Lord would speak through me because I don't just want to talk. I want to say, what does God want to say to the leaders of Canada? I believe um, I spoke what he wanted me to say. And uh, I, w I feel like I was blunter in some of my comments than I've ever been before. I don't think I was uh, too blunt, but I mean, I was in some ways amazed at, w at what I felt God had put on my heart and, uh, you know, not to seem Gnostic like I was uh, getting Rima words of knowledge through my talk like a teleprompter, but I did really have a keen sense that what I had to say was um, for uh, the Canadian leaders to hear in their hearts. Uh, and it was, um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't wait to, I can't wait to see, see what, what you said. said. Well, I know the theme of, of seven men. Uh, and, and these, these historical figures mm. that you've highlighted yeah. is, is living sacrificially, yeah. living for something larger than yourself. Well, it's, uh, and by the way, the secret of their greatness, I can say it since I'm here in Toronto. Am, am I in Toronto? Yeah, well, yeah. Burlington. Close enough? Yeah, but okay. But you're close. I'm trying to keep track of the cities. But the secret, the big secret, is that they're all Canadian. Oh, I, yeah. I, I hate to, uh, you know, yeah, to yeah. keep that under the bushel, and everybody needs to know every one he, of the He used to write men. humor for the New York Times, folks. No, no, You've with got emphasis it. on used to. Used yeah. To. No, there, uh, well, uh, but I, there, are, there are some Canadian links in there. But no, th these men, first of all, why I wrote this book is because I believe as a father, as a man, there is a crisis of manhood in the culture, a Absolutely. profound crisis. For 40 years, we haven't talked about what is a man. We, uh, we don't talk about what makes a man great. We don't have really manly role models. We've gotten confused about what is a man. And I said, this is wrong. And I wanna talk about that. I want people to begin talking about that. We live in a politically correct, uh, a grotesquely politically correct culture that can't even talk about these things anymore. God said that he made us in his image, male and female. This is important to God that we understand what is it to be a man, what is it to be a woman, and I said, I've got to write about it. And frankly, rather than just complain about it, I said, to me, the antidote or the beginning of, a, of an antidote to the problem or the answer to the problem is to set out real life heroes. These are seven men from history who I think represent God's idea of a great man. And if we can present these stories of real men uh, to men who are living today, we cannot help as men but be inspired to see that God, uh, frankly, wants every single one of us to be great, to understand what that means. I, you know, I get inspired myself when I read the stories of these great men, and I said, I, I've got to share these. These stories need to be known, um, you know. And I want to say this book is right on time for Father's Day, True Man. What a coincidence. Beautiful. But... Uh, just if you may be familiar with Bonhoeffer, how many pages was that? Uh, 600. Oh, just 600. I mean, Bonhoeffer is one of the men yeah. in here, one of the seven. But this is, I, as I was reading this, I, was, I, I made my children promise to read this book. This Did is great. Did you get it in writing, Moira? No, I'm just going to breathe down their neck okay. until they do it. Because uh, this is, these, there are heroes. Yeah. Well, you know, weekly we see great men. Yeah exposed, failing. Well, see, that's kind of the but, whole point, is that all we focus on today is the negative, that every great man has to be torn down for a comment he made, uh, something he did online, whatever it is. You know what? In history, there have been great men, and these are flawed men. They're sinners, but they were truly great, and we need to know that there is such a thing. We need to tell young men especially there is such a thing as a great man, and by the way, God wants you to be a great man. And I made them deliberately readable so that young people can read it as well. It's not only for young people, but they're very readable. I've reduced Bonhoeffer from 600 pages to about 20, 20 pages. So nobody readable. has an excuse. And I just, I couldn't help but think you must have waded through tons of material to whittle it down, not just to the length, but to get the gems that we don't know about these men. Well, that's the whole point is that, that these are really sketches and each one, I mean, I tell the life story of each one of these briefly, but I focus in, I home in, not home hone in. It's, my, it's very important for me to, to get this. As an English major get it right. and a writer, you don't, don't say hone in, home in. Um, but I home in on a part of the person's life that shows where they made some heroic sacrifice. And in every one of these, you talk about profiles and courage. These are, it's like Plutarch's lives. Every young man needs to know these stories of heroic sacrifice, 
because we're all called to live like that. And, you know, we, you're not going to get that from watching TV or movies. But we want you to watch TV next Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You're going to be back. Except for this show. Exactly. Did I mention that? Except for this show. Yeah, thank you. This book is at our e-store. You might just be on time for Father's Day. And, and I just want to point out that this issue of Christianity Today features an amazing testimony from a very, very dashing uh, man. There's Eric. And uh, I don't know, we might get time next week to talk about the golden fish. Right. It's going to be the same pocket handkerchief. I just want to break it to you. It's the only one I own. I am prepared. Thank you.